Hallelujah. You may be seated, and if you would, turn in your Bibles to the second chapter of the Bible, Genesis chapter 2. My subject this morning, tied to the whipping post, tied to the whipping post. This is the Easter season. We think about the cross, and the church has failed to realize that before Jesus went to that cross, he was tied to a whipping post, and that's important. And if you'll stick with me, you will understand the new and the better covenant that you and I have today that's established upon better promises. My subject this morning, tied to the whipping post. Now, if you really want to understand something, you must go back to the root, to the very beginning. Well, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. God spoke, and whatever God spoke, it was so, and God spoke the world into existence. Now, look at Genesis 2 and 7. The world was good, the world was pure, and the world was perfect. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. God created man in his own image. He made him a speaking being. Your words have power. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and you don't need to talk what the world says. You need to talk faith. You need to talk what God has said about you in the Holy Bible. God created man in his own image, and he created us a speaking being. And God gave man dominion over the earth, and he placed him in a beautiful garden, a paradise. Look at Genesis 2, 15. And the Lord God took man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and of evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. God saw that man was lonely. So he put him to sleep, and he took a rib from his side and created him a helpmate, and Adam called her woman. So I want you to get the picture. God placed man in the most perfect spot in the world, and God would come down in the cool of the day and commune, talk, and walk with man. It was a beautiful, tranquil paradise. It was a blissful world, and there was only one requirement, faith in the word of the Father and obedience to his command. Now, think about that. It was a beautiful, peaceful, tranquil garden, a paradise. And God gave man dominion over everything, and he placed him in that garden to dress it, to tend to it, and to keep it. Satan in his depiction. He had once been an angel of authority in heaven, and he was watching what was going on. He was watching from a distance, and he entered into that garden. When Satan entered into that garden, two angels of darkness, two demon spirits, sickness, sin, the agents of heartache and sorrow, they accompanied the devil. That serpent that he took was so beautiful and upright that Eve, her eyes were caught by the tantalizing effect of that. And while she was focusing on that serpent, two demons, sin and sickness, entered into that garden, into that paradise. Eve was deceived, and by obeying the words of Satan, she disobeyed God. God told us that if, the devil told us that if you eat of that fruit, you'll be like God. She was already like God. Adam was already like God. They were created in God's image, and, and they were in a beautiful paradise. But she ate of the forbidden fruit, and she gave to Adam, and he ate also. 
Hand in hand came sin and sickness into this world. Hand in hand, they have walked through the years since that day. But instead of leaving his creation in the hands of the devil to suffer the double curse of sin and sickness, the loving heart of God began even that day to lay plans for redemption of mankind, a double cure for a double curse. But even though man had to be driven from the garden, God gave the first prophetic promise that he would send a redeemer, someone that would redeem us, deliver us from the clutches of darkness and write our names in the Lamb's book of life. We're getting ready to celebrate Easter, his resurrection. But before he was crucified, he went to the whipping post. And it was there that he paid for your health. My subject this morning, tied to the whipping post. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you that it is living, that it's powerful. Lord, and when that word is anointed, it goes forth. It splits soul and spirit asunder. It brings forth of itself, first the blade, then the ear. Lord, it brings forth the fullness of your glory and your power. Psalms 107 verse 20 says, You sent your word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Father, I thank you for the privilege to preach the word of God. Let my words be set on fire by the Holy Ghost. Let them find lodging in the heart. I thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders in the name of Jesus. And the church said in Jesus' name, amen. God said that through the seed of woman would come a redeemer who would bruise the head of the serpent that entered that garden, and that serpent would bruise his heel. This promise has been reiterated down through the scriptures, showing us that God is is a loving generational God. God loves you. God cares for you. God looks and watches over you with infinite care, and God is a loving God. Now, when the children of Israel came out of Egyptian bondage, Moses understood the fact that salvation and healing were going to be provided in the atonement. Look at Exodus 15, 26. God said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, read your Bible. If thou wilt do that which is right in his sight, obey God, and give ear to his commandments. Listen to what the Spirit is saying. Keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptian. And here's the promise. I am your Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. That is what was promised to those people. They come out of Egyptian bondage. Can you imagine them back there in slavery for 430 years? And grandpa's been all over like this, and they got arthritis, and they got all kind of itises, and he walks under that doorpost where the blood has been a ply and snap, crackle and pop, and he comes out of that, glory to God, healed. He brought them forth with silver and gold. There was not one feeble person among their tribe. That's what the Word of God declares to us hallelujah and they got there and they they were wondering how did all this happen granddaddy you all been over you 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 were emaciated and you had this problem because we were in slavery how did all this happen god said i did it i did it i'm the one i healed you you got my covenant people I did it, I did it, and you're healed because I am your Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. Glory to God. I love the word. God clearly told them that with disobedience would come sickness and disease. God also told them that if they would obey him, he would provide salvation and healing. This world is under curse. And, and, but we're not under the curse. We've been redeemed from the curse. And you've got to use your faith to get what God has provided. That's why I'm preaching the word of faith. Paul said it is the word of faith which we preach. Hallelujah. When they disobeyed God in the wilderness, you know the story. Sin laid them low. Fiery serpents bit them. Many of them died. Then they repented. 
And God commanded that a brazen serpent should be lifted up on a pole. And everyone that looked upon that brazen serpent, they found a double cure, forgiveness of sin and healing for their bodies. Jesus later said in, in the Gospel of John, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Have you got everlasting life? Then you're in covenant, and there are covenant blessings that belong to you. Jesus was speaking of the cross and the atonement, which would be provided salvation and healing. I think some churches are afraid to preach it. See, my name is not on the line. I'm just a messenger. But I got enough faith to believe that if I deliver the message, the Holy Ghost will show up because I didn't choose to do this thing. He called me, hallelujah. And I, I, I preach the word and I watch God do signs and wonders and miracles. Amen. The psalmist clearly understood this when he recorded these words. Look at Psalms 103 verse 2. Bless the Lord. O oh, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What are those benefits, David? Look at verse 3. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Look at your name and tell it. Said, all my disease are healed because they're not my disease anyway. I'm not claiming any of it. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Now, notice that the first two benefits that David mentioned were forgiveness and salvation and that overcame the power of sin. And then divine healing for the body, which overcomes the power of sickness and disease. Now, Isaiah, Isaiah the great prophet, he caught a glimpse of the coming Redeemer, and he declared what would be accomplished in the atonement. He saw this 700 years before Jesus was ever born as a baby in a manger. Look at Isaiah 53 and 5. We read it so quickly, we just gloss over it. Listen to it. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Right there, there's forgiveness of sin. There's peace of mind. Chastisement of our peace was upon him. That's healing for the body. By his stripes, we are healed. Now, I want you to notice that because the coming of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the seed of the woman, was the coming of the great deliverer to deliver the world from the curse. The Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every man that hangeth on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through faith. And the Bible goes on to say, If you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Every promise in this book is yes and amen. They all belong to you. They belong to me. And they belong to the body of Christ. Tell, tell somebody next to you, I'm getting my miracle today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus, he comes in the flesh. He's baptized at the Jordan River. He's led into the wilderness by the Spirit of God. He faces his arch rival, the devil, in the wilderness. And he overcame him with the word of God. And he returns to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. I want to operate in the power of the Spirit. I said, Lord, I've got a measure. We got a measure in this church. We want a greater measure of your Spirit. Jesus had the Spirit without measure. And the church today needs a greater measure of the Spirit. Praise God. I tell you, we're the righteous of God. We need to live like it. Go and praise God. Hallelujah. Woo! My Lord. Jesus goes to his own hometown. He picks up the scroll of Isaiah. It's his custom to go to the temple on the Lord's day. I'm glad to see you in church today. Aren't you glad to be in the house of God and, and to be enjoying the benefits 
that Jesus has paid for and, and, and to feel God's awesome presence. And if you can sense his presence, let me tell you, when you get his presence, you get everything that's in him. You get salvation. You get deliverance. You get healing. It all belongs to you as a child of God. So lay hold of it by faith in the word of God. Now, Jesus goes in, picks up the scroll of Isaiah, and he announces his mission to the world. Look at Luke 4, 18. I love this. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Do you feel him upon you? <laughs> I feel him upon me and in me. He is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive. Have you ever been captive? I was. I was held in chains and bondages of sin, but Jesus came through my walls and broke every shackle and every chain. He said, I've come to set the captive free, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus came to set the captive free. I want you to let that lay upon you. He came to set me free. He came to deliver me from those two agents that slipped into that beautiful paradise, sickness and sin. He was our burden bearer who came to redeem us, to redeem us from sin, sickness, heartache, sorrow, and disease, and every work of the devil. He forgives all our sin, and he heals all our disease. And these two blessings, they followed the master everywhere he went. On the cross, he bore our sins in his own body, and he provided for our salvation. But at the whipping post, he took stripes upon his back so that we, his children, could be healed because healing is the children's bread. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil and he brought a double cure, salvation from sin and healing for the physical body. Now, I want you to think of all the miracles that are in the Gospels that you saw Jesus perform in his earthly ministry. Every healing that he performed, it was done to fulfill what Isaiah the prophet had said in, in the first 53rd chapter of Isaiah, we call it the great redemptive chapter. Look at this verse once again, Isaiah 53 and 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. I did it. I was guilty. You did it. You were guilty. You needed a Savior. I needed a Savior. We all needed a Savior. We needed a healer. He heals the broken heart. He binds up their wounds. That's my testimony. Hallelujah. I know you got one of your own. Glory to God. Jesus was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And Isaiah said, with his stripes, we are healed. Now, this is a prophecy 700 years before Jesus ever comes to planet Earth. Now, I'm going to give you some background here, some of his miracles. When the four men brought their friend to Jesus at Capernaum, Jesus forgave him of his sin and healed him of his disease on the basis of what Isaiah the prophet had said. They let this man down from the roof. Four men tore the roof off that place, raising the roof for Jesus. I think it's time to raise the roof for Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory. And they let this man down into the presence of Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees reasoned in their heart and said, only God can forgive sin. They knew Jesus was a healer. They had seen him open blind eyes. They had seen the lame walk, the deaf hear. They had seen him cleanse lepers, and they were there looking for another miracle. And Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. Now, they knew he could do all the other. They didn't doubt that at all. They were there to watch some miracles. But Jesus gave him the greatest miracle of all. He said, your sins are forgiven. And after Jesus provided covenant blessing for him, he said, rise, 
take up your bed and walk because healing is the children's bread. So he brings us in the covenant relationship so he can pour other blessings upon our lives. Hallelujah. Now, that tells me that when he forgave his sin and healed his body, that God's plan of salvation, healing and salvation, should never be divided. We should never forget any of the benefits. He forgives all our sin. He heals all our disease. I love to preach about blind Barnabas. When Jesus healed Barnabas at Jericho, he healed him on the basis of Isaiah chapter 53. I, I, those old songs there down inside, I mean, they used to sing this from Brother Chuck at our church. One sat alone beside the highway begging. His eyes were blind, the light he could not see. He clutched his rags and shivered in the shadows. Then Jesus came and bade the darkness flee. When Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, the tears are wiped away. He takes the gloom and he fills your life with gladness. For all is changed when Jesus comes to stay. Barnabas, the beggar, sitting by the roadside, and Jesus comes by, said, what would you have me do? He said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. He said, Lord. He made him Lord. That is covenant. And then Jesus opened those blinded eyes. The first thing he ever saw with the face of Jesus. He'd heard the birds sing. He'd heard all the sounds around him. He'd heard the crowds and the commotion, their faith and their unbelief. But when he looked into Jesus' face, he said, he loves me. He has saved me and delivered me. Called him Lord. Now, when Jesus healed the woman with the issue of blood, who had been sick for 12 long years, she had spent everything she had on doctors. She grew no better. He healed her on the basis of what Isaiah had said in Isaiah chapter 53. When Jesus healed the ten lepers at Samaria, he broke the religious rules. He went through Samaria, and he entered into a leper colony. Unclean, they had to stand off. Unclean, unclean. Have you ever felt that way? But when the blood comes, hallelujah, the blood will wash away your sin. What will wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that washes white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing, 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 nothing but the blood. Go on, praise him that you've been redeemed by the blood. Jesus opened the gate to that leper colony, and he went into that village, and he went in to where the mess was. <laughs> Can't nobody get into your mess like Jesus can. Hallelujah. Woo! When they saw Jesus, they got excited, and they cried out, Master, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Jesus, one in control, Master, have mercy on us. They were speaking the language of faith, and Jesus heard their cry. Faith must be in two places. Faith has to be in your heart, and that's why I preach the word, to get it into your heart and into my heart. And then it's got to be in your mouth. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. With the heart, man believes unto healing and miracles. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I don't want to believe in anything. I want to get unto it. Hallelujah. I believe, but praise God, believing is not enough. If I don't get unto it, I could still be lost in sin. I had to believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that I believe Jesus Christ took my sin, washed me white as snow, came into my heart, wrote my name in the Lamb's book of life, and now I can look up and say, Father, hallelujah. You remember that day, don't you? Deliverance is by the mouth. These lepers were a mess. They were rejects. They were separated from society. And it looked like all hope 
was gone. Have you ever been there? It looked like all hope was gone, but they began to say something with their mouth. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Jesus heard the cry of faith, and guess what? He healed them on the basis of what Isaiah the prophet had said in Isaiah chapter 53. Now, let's get to the Scripture again. When Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law, who was sick with the fever, he healed her on the basis of what the prophet Isaiah had said. Now, I want you to get this picture. Peter's mother-in-law, she's sick with the fever. Jesus goes into that house to get some rest, to get away from the crowd, and he touches her, and one touch from Jesus, <laughs> and she was healed. Jesus is tired in his body. He wants to get away from the crowd, and he goes out. Peter couldn't heal his mother-in-law. None of those disciples with him could do it. But Jesus never fails. <laughs> One touch from the master's hand, and she was healed. Well, the crowd found out that they were there, and they found out Jesus is in the house. I wish people could find out that Jesus is in the house here at Westmoreland. There wouldn't be any seats left. Some of you drove 60 miles. I know others that, that, that drove from Henderson, from Dunn, North Carolina, and other places. I tell you, Lester Sumrall, he was preaching on national television. There was a little boy there, and he had a foot that was turned around backwards. Pastor Rick, you was at the tent today. I prayed for that little boy, and, and his foot straightened out in a little tent revival, a little gathering of people, but Jesus was there. And Lester was preaching on national television, and he prayed for that little boy's foot, and it turned around like that. And the TV station called him up and said, we can't have that. Said, you can preach your gospel, but we can't have signs and wonders like that. We can't have that, and you can't, you can't be on our TV program anymore. He said, that's all right. He said, I'll, I'll start my own TV program. He looked at that camera. He said, you know how much that camera is? That camera is $250,000. He said, that's all right. I'll take six of them. Faith was talking, and guess what? He did it. One lady got healed at his church. And she was from 60 miles away, and they went back to her church and, and told her pastor, said, I went to Lester Summerall's meeting, and the Lord Jesus healed me, and, and look at me, I'm cancer-free. He said, we can't have that kind of talk here. So she goes back to Brother Lester, and she's crying. He said, well, I'll tell you what, how far is it from your house to this, this place? She said, 60 miles. He said, well, why don't you drive the 60 miles and come to the house of God here and talk to the Lord all the way here, enjoy his presence here, and talk to the Lord on the way back home. See, faith always finds a way. And behind every excuse is a lack of desire. I just, I have never preached that sermon, but one of these days I will. Behind every excuse is a lack of desire. Faith must be in your heart. Hallelujah. Jesus was there, the crowd found out. And look at Matthew 8, 16. Peter's mother-in-law. When the eve was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. He cast out the spirit with his word and healed all that was sick. And here's what I want you to see. Jesus healed them all. Look at Matthew 8, 17. Why? Now, don't miss this. Do you miss your covenant blessing? that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took our sicknesses and bare our, took our infirmities and bare our sickness. Everyone that Jesus healed during his earthly ministry, he fulfilled them, he healed them to fulfill what the prophet Isaiah had spoken. Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Now, Jesus went to the cross to provide for our redemption. He went there to shed his precious blood and to redeem us. But before he went to the cross, he went to the whipping post 
to provide for our healing. He was tied to that whipping post. Look at it. Look at that whipping post. Jesus is tied there, and he gives his back to the smiters. He's allowing them to beat him, and they beat him beyond human recognition. So we have a new and a better covenant, and healing is provided in the atonement for us. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And Jesus forgives all our sin, and he heals all our disease, and these two blessings followed the master everywhere he went, and this is a dispensation of the Holy Ghost. Wherever the Holy Ghost shows up, praise God, these two blessings flow like a mighty river. Go and praise the Lord. He came as our burden bearer. And at the whipping post, he took stripes upon his back so we could be healed. Now I want you to get the picture. Peter, he's at the cross. But he was at the whipping post. He saw the Lord beaten, battered, body, in those stripes that had been laid upon his back to provide healing for God's children. And this is the record that Peter gives us. And I want you to notice the verb change. 1 Peter 2, 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. Live a holy life. You expect God's blessings. Live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Isaiah said you are healed. Peter's looking back at the cross. He said you were healed. Looking at the cross, Isaiah said you are. From the back of the cross, we see Peter looking, and Peter says, you were healed. Today, we are healed not because of Isaiah's prophecy. That prophecy, prophecy was fulfilled, and I gave you many examples and then read you the scripture out of Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. Healing today is based on the fact that Jesus gave his back to the smiters at the whipping post. And healing is in the atonement. Brother Ray, if you would come, please. Pastor Ricky. God has provided everything that pertains to life and godliness, and he has called us to the realm of his glory and his virtue. The realm of his glory and virtue, holy living, righteousness. Jesus was made sin with our sin so we could be made the righteousness of God in him. You're no longer an old sinner saved by grace. You are a brand new species, a new creation in Christ. Hallelujah. And old things have passed away, and all things have become new, and God's covenant blessings belong to you. Brother Ray. Hallelujah. He was wounded and bruised by his stripes. He was wounded for a transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. Think about it. Think about the price paid for you. Surely. At the whipping post, he comes to cross. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. Salvation is by faith. Healing is by faith. Surely Deliverance is by faith. On the cross crucified, Jesus. 
Jesus suffered and he died, the giver of life was he. Yes, my Lord was despised and rejected of me. God's healing anointing. He was bruised for our iniquity. I release God's miracle working power in the name of Jesus. By the authority of that name and the great commission of the Lord Himself, I say, be healed. Receive your healing, receive your miracle. And by I release the law of the spirit of life to flow into your body. I want you to watch this video right here. They crucified Jesus on a cross and put him to death. But before he went to the cross, he went to the whipping post to provide for our healing. Gave his back to the smiters. No fortius. Blow upon blow fell upon his quivering body. The biting whip fell again and again as he gave his back to the smiters. Spirit of the living God, why? Did they beat him so? Spirit of God, were those stripes laid upon his back to wash away my sins? Why did they whip him so? Was he whipped to cleanse me from my sins? 
Oh, no, my child. The blood of the cross was sufficient for that. Then why, tell me why, Spirit of God, why did they torture my Savior so? Why did they pluck the beard from his face? Why did they beat him beyond human recognition? Surely, Spirit of God, that was to wash away my sins. Oh, no, my child, the blood of the cross paid that price in full. Then, Spirit of God, why did it please the Father to bruise him? If those stripes did not cleanse me from my sin, why did they whip him and beat him so? Why, my child, don't you understand? Don't you know the meaning of those cruel blows? That was not a meaningless blow. That was not a meaningless pain. When they tied Jesus to the whipping post, that's when he purchased your healing. And by his stripes, you were healed. Healing is the children's bread. And the price was paid in full at the whipping post. You know, when I went through my recent heart ordeal, I told the devil, Jesus was tied to the whipping post for me. And devil, you're not tying me to any whipping post. Hallelujah. Jesus paid the price in full for our healing. When they tied him to the whipping post, and God gave me that revelation before I ever went into that operation. Hallelujah. And I tell you, I fought. I fought through my way through second heaven where principalities and powers are. And I found out that the devil is subject to the name of Jesus. And when he came into that garden, he brought sin and sickness. But the power of the blood and the blood shed and that beating at the whipping post, it has provided everything for us as children of God. Healing was provided for every cancer cell at the whipping post. Healing was provided for every rape victim and every abused child at the whipping post. Healing was provided for heart disease, for the diabetic, for cirrhosis of the liver at the whipping post. He gave his back to the smiters to provide healing for back problems. Ha <laughs> ha, woo, be healed, Brother Chuck. In the name of Jesus, arthritis must bear to the name of Jesus. Leg problems, nerve problems, for blindness, for sickness, for deafness, for lameness, for broken lives, for broken dreams, and for broken hearts. It happened at the whipping post when they beat him beyond human recognition. He came to set the captive free. And deliverance was provided at Calvary for every alcoholic, for every drug addict, for every person bound by pornography, for every AIDS victim, for homosexuality and lesbianism, and for sexual sins, and for every work of the devil. My Lord and my God, the blood of Jesus Christ and those stripes laid upon his back, they declare our victory. Jesus was tied to the whipping post, and I intend to preach the whole gospel and believe God for miracles. Hallelujah. I believe the Holy Ghost will manifest the glory of God when the word is preached under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Woo! Salvation is by faith. Deliverance is by faith. Healing is by faith. Miracles come in can, and if you can believe what I preach today, you can see the glory of God. All things are possible to him that believes, not just some things, but all things. Praise God. Hallelujah. Go on and praise him. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left the crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Thank God for this great salvation. And if you are saved, if your name is in the Lamb's book of life. Healing belongs to you as a child of God. The prophecies of Isaiah were fulfilled when Jesus healed the multitudes in his earthly ministry. But in the new and better covenant, we have better promises and healing is not on the basis of a prophecy. It is on the basis of an established fact. 
It was provided when Jesus was tied to that whipping post. He gave his back to the smiters and the word of God declares that by his stripes you were healed, I was healed, every child of God was healed, and that's the truth of the word of God. Let's sing that song again, Brother Ray. Hallelujah. Altars are open. They're open for every need in this place. He was bruised for our iniquity. We love you, Lord. Surely he bore. Take that step of faith like you did when you were a sinner. And you came to the altar. You came to the altar to get saved. You didn't sit in your seat and get saved. You came to the altar. Put your faith in motion. Come up and talk to the Lord. Tell the Lord, I'm crying out to you. I'm crying the cry of faith, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Woo. Hallelujah. sickness and disease. I'm glad I'm healed today. I'm glad I'm getting better and better every day in every way. Hallelujah. Glory. Woo. I thank God for the blood of the cross. I thank God for the stripes of the whipping post. My Lord. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Hallelujah. this lady right here. And when I touch her, the power of God is will right take care of everything. Receive your healing. Be made whole in Jesus' name. Devil, you're a liar and you're illegal in this body. All your works are illegal. Go in the name of Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Brother Woody, Here's one right here ready to receive. Thank you, Lord. I see your faith. I know he does. <laughs> Take it. Woo! Glory. Take it. Bless it. Glory. Hallelujah. I tell you, you can see faith. I said you can see it. Woo! Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Free at last. Free at last. Suffered and he died, the giver of love was he. Yes, my Lord was despised and rejected of men. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. Everything he's got for you. The Holy Ghost interrupted my day yesterday. My sermon was finished, but he said, Oh no, I'm changing things. He's a change agent, he shows up to change things. Surely, 
Christ, I'm healed. Hallelujah. Tell the Lord, by your stripes, I'm healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was bruised for our iniquity. Surely he bore our sorrows. concerned about glory command those sails to clear up and all of all there is all power you are healed in glory. the name Hallelujah. of Jesus there is power I told the devil I said you made a colossal mistake you have awakened the warrior spirit the Lord Jesus himself in me Awaken him in this church. Hallelujah. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing to do signs and wonders in Jesus' name. Reach out and take it. Take it to the world out there that is waiting for you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. There is power. Yes, there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, to break every 